the post-war era, are you going to say something? No, go ahead. I, would, I do think the post... I was going to say something on the post-Cold War era when you're ready. The post-war era over there could, uh, unfortunately, create a situation whereby we would win the war but lose the peace. Do you agree? I not only agree, I made this point in my testimony to the Senate Armed Services Committee. I don't think it's in our interest to destroy the Iraqi regime, even if it means leaving Kuwait occupied for a long, long time. I think our highest priority interest there is to maintain a balance in the region. Now, I'm, I'm, course, let me get this straight now. So you, you oppose, and you still oppose, you support the President of the United States, I, I support. Presume. Absolutely. Right now, after he's decided to go to war, there's no choice. I'm with him 100%. But you think... We're on an inexorable right. course, and we have to make the best of it. But you think he made an erroneous judgment in going on the offensive, trying to force Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait? I think he runs a big risk by going on the offensive, because it could, as you just described, lead to a destabilization of the region in the post-war period. It's been the policy of this government, at least since the 19 late 70s, early 80s, to maintain a balance of power out there. That's been the highest priority. Well, the this balance of power has been largely built on the opposition that existed between Iraq. Iran and Iraq. Right. Now, if you no longer have an Iraq in the puzzle, you're going to have a very dominant Iran. Absolutely. Iran and Saudi Arabia will sit or stand bestride the Arab uh, oil and the Middle East, correct? True. Right. Maybe Egypt might, however, and there are those who believe that Egypt will emerge as number one. Do you think so? Well, that's clearly what Mubarak wants to do. Saddam was challenging Mubarak for the leadership in the, in the Arab world. That's why he wants to see him done in. But the question is, what will fill the vacuum? We might see a Kurdish autonomous state arise. We might see the Syrians decide to take a piece of Iraq. Did you observe that Turgut Ozal has permitted the United States to use, and the Allied forces, to use Turkey as a launching area for its plane. Indeed. Don't you think the price we'll be paying for that is that Turkey already has designs on Kurdish territory within Iraq, and we will have to contend with the possibility that Turkey may gobble up a piece of Iraq? I, I don't know whether they'll gobble up a piece of Iraq, but they'll certainly want some say about the post-war settlement in Iraq, which, in which they will want to exclude any kind of Kurdish autonomy. Do you think there's going to be a can of worms when you factor into this also, also the terrorism? I not only think it's going to be a can of worms, that's what explains my lack of enthusiasm for the initial campaign. I thought defending Saudi Arabia, having a fairly significant force out there... Like what? 50,000? Well... 75,000? Would that do the trick defensively to protect Saudi we Arabia? We need a couple hundred or even maybe 400,000 out there initially. Then we need to bring them down, leave the weapons in place, and 50,000 might be a residual force, which could be regenerated in 10 days or two weeks yeah. by air force. But we're past that. Gen that was what we, that was a strategy right. we could have followed until no okay. November. We're past that. Right. But it's a can of worms that we're going into, a big can of worms. On the it, other hand, it, there's also a can of worms in leaving Saddam Hussein with the kind of military infrastructure that we're seeing now, resilient, but, entrenched, and big, but, and underground. True. Isn't the biggest, isn't the biggest justification for having, our having gotten into this uh, offensively, as George Bush has, the very size of the arsenal of Saddam Hussein and what it would be like five or ten years from now if we did not go in. That's an argument that can be made. I don't know whether that affected the president's decision much or not. Let me go back to this can of worms business. Let's not leave the impression that there's any course of action out there that doesn't have several cans of worms confronting it. Right. Even if the, the, the suggestion that I made of, of a defensive posture right. to balance the power. So the trick is to figure out worms which, and... which can is small. Absolutely. Now, which one is smaller? You think by letting him stay in power, you've you, you maintain the balance of power. You, you're in Saudi Arabia. You've got the presence there that we've always yearned for. Right. Why did we have to go the extra step? And you can cause him to atrophy by shutting off his technical... Well, I, incoming, incoming gear from the United States and the Soviet Union, and you can dry them up militarily. I that think way. there were some. I think there are very strong arguments for that, but that's history right now. That's purely an analytic review, review of the past. We're on a course of action now, as, which, as you said, creates a lot of uncertainties. Uh, there may be some silver linings in this. I think there will be a period of apparent calm and stability if the ground campaign or the whole war goes on and we see most of the Iraqi army destroyed. Before, 
Yeah, before we be, be, before we leave the segment, though, there are other cards he can play to make the can of worms worse. For example, he can release oil into the Persian Gulf to prevent desalinization from taking place, for which Saudi Arabia, Arabia depends almost exclusively for its water and other other countries in that area. Do we he know? Can do, that. do we know technically that will have that effect? There may be ways technically to get around that effect. It is said if you want if you want a list of uh, 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 if you want a litany of horrors, he can set the oil wells on fire and he can convert day into night. He probably will set those on fire. I think we've already anticipated that. And if you went to Saudi Arabia right now, you'd find almost all of the world's outstanding oil well firefighters. We're prepared for that. You put all that together and you put them in a scale and you try to assess which is the lesser evil or which is the greater evil. Which is the greater evil? To go in and release all that or to stay out and live with him and, and cause him to atrophy in other ways? My own judgment has been not to go in, and not Does to that remain that. your judgment today in the, uh, uh, well, on the basis it, of what you see in the last uh, 10 days in the prosecution of the war? If you could roll time back to November, I'd say yes, but you can't. Therefore, I have to What's deal... your judgment today? Did George Bush err? The jury is still out, but it does...